the Empowering Teaching Excellence Podcast, powered by Academic and Instructional Services at Utah State University. This is the space where we dive into relevant topics in teaching and learning with college instructors, graduate students, and professional staff. Episode 7, Relaunching the Career Design Center. All right. Well, welcome to the ETE podcast. We're excited to have the Career Design Center with members of the Career Design Center here with us today. Um, we have Jillian Morley, uh, the assistant direct, one of the two assistant directors uh, with the Career Design Center, as well as Joseph Banks, the other assistant director of the Career Design Center. Um, if that name sounds unfamiliar, we, it's a relatively new name that's been rolled out this fall um, for what was the Career Services. Um, prior to, and that we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we jump into that, can you just tell me a little bit about yourselves and your paths to coming to Utah State and being at Utah State and the roles that you're playing now? I can go, sure. So yeah, um, for me, my path has been kind of, just kind of my life has been going back and forth between California, Utah, and Japan. And so um, what I've done, at least with my career-wise, I started out, um, I got my MBA from the Monterey Institute of International Studies. And then um, after that, started working in Cal State, Fuller, well, just near Fullerton, um, as a career uh, coach over there for a temporary position until I moved up here to Utah State the first time, which was at the Huntsman School of Business. And I was working with their internship office. Um, and I was there for about five years until I moved back to California uh, to UC Riverside and working with international interns, um, basically trying to help them find, um, international students find internships within the area. Uh, and did that for about another five years before moving up here again, um, just because I loved USU and it was great to, it was a great team to work with as well. And I've been here for about two and a half years or so as the assistant director. Nice, well welcome back. And Japan just in the mix. And Japan has been in the mix. In fact, right before I did my master's program, I actually taught in Japan for about three years or so. Nice. Very cool. So I've always been kind of in the higher education or education field. Um, just love kind of teaching students and help coaching them and help them find their careers. Awesome, thanks Joseph. Yeah, I'm Jillian Morley. I'm one of the assistant directors as well. Uh, and I've been at Utah State for about six years now. I can't believe it's been six years. Time flies. I started out um, as a career coach, and from there I just progressed within the office and the team and uh, moved to assistant director, uh, I think about two or three years ago now. Um, before that, I was just in grad school. My path has been a little bit more linear than Joe's. Uh, so I went to Arizona State in Phoenix for grad school got my master's in higher education and leadership. Um, while I was there, I was volunteering and doing internships, um, really involved with the Career Center there, and then also their Student and Cultural Engagement Office. Uh, so I got a lot of experience uh, working at a really large university with a lot of um, diverse groups of students. Um, and then I focused my master's actually on the international professionalism and helping students understand um, like for international students, what professionalism and work culture is kind of like here in the United States. So career stuff has always been in my path, um, and I'm really excited to talk about our new direction today. Awesome. Well, that is, that's a great segue into the next t topic, but uh, things have changed a little bit this fall. Um, can you highlight some of those changes and, and just tell us a little bit about how, how those are getting actualized? Mm-hmm. So um, if, can I start with more of like how we approach, like why we're even changing it? Yes, we'll for sure. Let's okay. do that. Yeah, so because it's good to have some of that context. So a few years ago, um, we read a book called Designing Your Life, and it's by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. So they're both engineers at Stanford, and they were working with a lot of students who were having a hard time seeing, you know, what their career paths were going to be. Um, and so the authors, they, as they were helping students, they saw that this was a real problem and they could apply these design thinking principles from engineering into career planning. So ultimately they created a class, they wrote a book, and so many schools are using this book now all about using design thinking in your career preparation. So that really got us thinking and you know, looking at the traditional way of career services and how it was working but also not working and what we need to do to progress and move forward. So from that, um, we really started looking at what are our practices 
Um, between a lot of that, we ended. We actually moved over to the provost office from student affairs. Um, it's that it's becoming more and more common for career centers to move out of student affairs more into academics. Um, and then from there, we actually read an article called The Five Future Directions of Career Services. And that really outlined a lot of what we were already thinking about and trying to do. Um, but it was really good to see that and see it's a tr not just us, but it's a nationwide trend. Um, so the five directions that career centers are really going through, um, they really want to integrate into academics. They want to build scalable structures. They want to teach life design measure impact rather than input, um, and then redefining their narrative. So redefining, it's not just a transactional place, but more of um, a planning type of place that you come to. So yeah, some of that really influenced why we were changing um, and giving us a good foundation to move forward on. So this has been a process that's been in the making for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been working on probably for the last um, well, almost four years now, we've been really looking at the, the design thinking yeah. framework and really trying to change what we're doing. And now we really, we've launched a few things over the past couple of years, but now it's like a really big relaunch, especially with our name change. That's awesome. Well, and on top of the name change, you've got a new director. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little, uh, um, Kevin Schwimley? Yeah, Kevin Schwimley. Schwimley. Yep. Sorry. Schwimley. But yeah, can you tell us a little bit about Kevin and where he's coming from? And yeah. Absolutely. So Kevin Schwemann, he's joining us from Central Michigan University. Um, when he was there, he w was working in their career center for a couple years. And then he's also been really involved in service learning within higher education. Um, and he's just finishing up his PhD, looking at um, how service learning is impacting uh, retention. So we're excited to bring in his skill sets between his experience with the career centers and with the service learning to look at how we can enhance students' experiences. Uh, so he joined us November 1st, and um, we're excited to have him here and start getting to work with us. That's awesome. So um, along with that, you've got a new mission statement, too. That I was, I'm just going to read it because I think it'll be easier. But the career... Design Center empowers all students to design their careers path, paths through university-wide career education, employer engagement, and access to experiential learning and post-graduation opportunities. What are some of the big initiatives that are going to play in there? And, and I, I, like, I love the idea of empowering students to do this and take this on as, as a challenge. And I try to do that in some of our, especially our career, career development classes. Um, what are some initiatives that you you all are pulling together? Yeah, well, um, the, the the really exciting thing about the the mission statement, and so that's been something at least for the past almost year year. Or so we've been working on um, as we were like, okay, we want to change how we view career services and how we do things. And so with the career design center name, we had that update to our mission statement. Um, and so you know, we did a lot of reflection on how we really want to get that out to people. And so. One of the, the key points in there is that we empower all students, right? And so we would do, we, we looked at a lot of our data and stuff and trying to see what students were we serving, right? And we did, you know, we were serving some good students and things, but um, a lot of it were like the top students, you know, the top 10%, which is great because they're really active and they're really out there. Um, but we weren't reaching some of those other students um, through that just because they, you know, they have other things that they've got families, they've got work, they've got life, basically. And we're like, okay, how do we reach all students and so we kind of make that as our, our, one of our missions is trying to get to all of those students and so with that I mean there's only about like at most five coaches that we're working with here and it's really hard to get with a university of about 20,000 or so right um, so we had to kind of rethink some of the uses of technology with the you know the classes and making stuff available online and asynchronously and everything um, recording a lot of our content so that people can access it um, all of those things are part of that thing to get to reach all students. And so um, that's a very important part about a, a very important change there. The other one is just the design thinking itself. That uh, it's more than just coming in and like, oh yeah, here are the jobs out here for you. We'll, we'll assign you a job and then good luck with your life, right? Really, we want to help um, teach students how to not just you know find a job, even right out of university, but how to actually design their career, how to take ownership of that. And with that, you know, even when changes happen, you know, things happen, um, 
they're able to recalculate, that they're able to, to change things without having to be part of the university anymore. But you know, after they've gone five, 10 years down the road, they can still see, oh, this is my career plan or this is my career design. What changes do I need to make to help fit that with my overall career goals? I love that idea. Can For sure. that yeah, too? please. Yeah, last week I was listening to a great webinar about the future of career services, and they talked about we're not just teaching students how to fish, because we can, you know, we can give them a fishing pole and they can catch a fish. We want to teach them how to fish for lobster. So with lobsters, you put a big cage down on the ground and you let the lobsters come to you. So we want to teach students how to let opportunities come to them rather than helping them catch the one fish. Because yeah. with careers, there's so many opportunities and sometimes students don't know all of the options. They're focused on the one fish. So we want to teach them how to fish for lobsters. I love it. So, so how, how are we going to get more students, um, if we're looking at 10% are really seeking you out, how are we going to get more lobster catchers out there? Yeah, so a few of the initiatives we've been working on will hopefully help with that. So one of the big pieces that we're working on is building scalable structures. Like Joe said, we only have about five career coaches for the whole university. So um, creating more online content that's more on demand for students is a big way. So we can refer students to Canvas or other outlets um, for more of those self-learners. And then uh, we are also, um, we've redone all of our classes and we've created a few new classes so we can hopefully have students enroll in those. Um, and then we've also, um, what am I missing? <laughs> well, the thing that I think is most exciting is the modules that we have. So basically we have created you know, certain modules that faculty can embed into their own classroom. So they don't have to come up with content or anything, but um, the modules themselves, you know, we're, they're on different topics that they can be about like job searching or it could be about resume production or it could be networking. All of those different aspects that if a faculty member wanted to, they could either make a career week and put all of them in for the assignments this week. I mean, it comes with assignments and stuff already in it too. Um, or they could just take one or they can complement it with a presentation with us being in the classroom. Um, all different ways to easily put it into the classroom setting. Um, but, you know, so we can reach all those other classrooms without necessarily physically being there um, to try to help get to more students. I love that. It's similar to what the library's done with some of their research helps and research search, search topic areas. And it's so useful for us as faculty um, to have that out there. So what are the ideal, we'll kind of go down that rabbit hole a little bit, what are the ideal classes that where you all think that would be like, should I be doing this in my introduction or my breadth and social science class, or should I be doing this more in my senior seminar class, where it's really is that we treat it as a launching class into their future? Well, we hope we can get these modules into all types of classes, um, but ideally, classes with a lot of enrollment, because we know that's where we can make the biggest impact quickly. Um, so with these big enrollment classes, you know, we could have the faculty embed a module on resumes, and it's a general module where it could apply to all students. But then we're actually working on specific college content now, so then if there is a senior seminar class, they can embed not just the resume module, but the content specific to their college too. That's awesome. um, so it's a work in progress still, and, but we're hoping we can have it useful for all levels of classes. Oh, that's really, that's great. So what are the best ways for f faculty, instructors, um, people going through the ET-10 program who might be graduate students that we can start taking better advantage of all these awesome resources that you've created? Yeah, so uh, we, on our website, we've just redone our website too, we have a really good faculty tab and that has a whole list of ways faculty can be involved as a partner with our office all different levels. So um, we have the modules, which we've talked about. We also have presentation requests. So if faculty want us to come in person or over Zoom live with students, we can do a presentation. Um, but then we can also um, refer, they can refer their students to our drop-in hours. So we've really looked at our drop-in hours for resume cover letter reviews and scaled that a bit. That's so awesome. if a lot of faculty will have class assignments um, to go meet with your career coach. And um, part of our goal is to help free up appointment time so we can work on reaching those students not in the 10%, top 10%. Yeah. Yeah. So faculty can really use our drop-in hours 
where it's a little more available. Mm -hmm. um, and our drop-in yeah. hours, just for those who may not know it, would be um, we go to a lot of graduate students, especially um, a lot from the Masters of HR program, and so some of their, their background and thing is in, in hiring and recruiting right. and such. And so they've done, in fact, a lot of them have done internships um, where they're looking at resumes and they're looking at, so they've got the expertise on there, plus we train them mm -hmm. um, in our, our methods, at least for each different um, departments and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really well-trained. Um, students that can, can take a look at them. Even if it takes like 10 or 15 minutes, you can get that really quick overview. Um, and like Jillian says, it kind of frees up our time to go into some of the more, you know, if we want a little bit more tailored, um, or if you're looking for more like the salary negotiations, or you're like, oh, I've got an interview for my first job or something coming up, we have time to be able to talk to those students a little more. Yeah, and faculty can also refer employers. So we know a lot of employers, a lot of alumni will reach out to their previous professors. Um, and it's really great when faculty can refer those employers over to us so we can get them connected on Handshake. We can help them post opportunities, learn about how they can visit campus. Um, those connections are really meaningful. And we know alumni love reaching out to their professors, so those referrals are always so beneficial. So you're still doing all of the crazy and saying cool things you were doing before, mm -hmm. plus and you've found ways to maximize and do, do some additional things. I love that. Um, one of the things, that, and I think we maybe had this conversation last week, Jillian, but you talked about the whole university um, as a group as, of all of us playing into helping these students develop their careers. It's got to be more than just your office doing this. Um, what are other ways both faculty as well as other programs can connect with, with your program, or maybe you're already connecting with other programs? Um, yeah, for like, I mean, more and more career development is becoming a responsibility of everybody in the university community, not just necessarily one office that's doing it. And so, um, like with our office, we can provide that guidance and the direction, but some of that, you know, the nitty gritty stuff or some of the, the more specific things can um, really benefit from. Um, faculty guidance or you know even just that networking connection there or that somebody they they trust um, somebody that they know because they've been working with them every day and stuff um, uh, can really help out the students and so like on the faculty end you know a lot of it can be like um, just to be able to um, show how the things that they're learning in the classroom relates to what they're going to be using you know the application of it as well just even that quick connection might be the um, the easiest thing where a student can say, like, oh, you know, this is great. I love what I'm learning, but I don't know how to use it, right? Yeah. Um, and so part of that, you know, if the faculty can tie that in and just say, hey, this is how you're going to be able to use it. So make sure, you know, this is important. This is not just for the test, right? This is for your life. Um, so that, that's one of them. Also connecting, like Julian was mentioning, with the um, alumni um, that reach back. Uh, a great way to, for uh, instructors to say, hey, I know somebody who works for this um, organization that you're interested in, maybe I can at least connect you guys and you guys can start a conversation where students can start to learn more about it and learn more about the, you know, the topic itself and, and what it's like to actually be out there using this stuff in the field. Um, so there, there's a lot of those things in there. Um, I think uh, another part of the challenge is that students need to see, you know, that connection, but also um, just seeing how like just that career content, if they can see that, that connection really easily, that will make the biggest difference, I believe. That's awesome. Great. Um, and then just, um, I want to make sure you had time to tell us about anything that I haven't hit on already, but, um, and then also if we can just let people know the best way that they can go about, the faculty and instructors specifically, how they should reach out to you and who, who they should reach out to. Um, I know you have numerous coaches on staff as well as multiple director, assistant directors, so. Yeah, so with the colleges, each college has an assigned career design specialist. Um, so for example, I'm assigned to the College of Agriculture and Applied Sciences. So faculty member, if they are on our website, you can look at the page of all of our design specialists and they can see who, which coach is their person. So that's the best way to get started. Um, also, the faculty tab on our website, we have contact info based on the topics, so that's an easy way to reach out to us. Um, but we're really excited to work with faculty more and really help integrate this career planning into academics. Um, a lot of faculty do it already, uh, but there's a handful that don't, so we're really excited to help them and not like add extra work to 
the plate of the faculty, but to show them how we can just supplement it and help them so students can really get connected. I love that. I love the module idea. We've always had, Dan is our, mm -hmm. our rep for our mm -hmm. college, and he's been fantastic to come into classes and, and put stuff together, and the students really respond well. Um, but at the same time, having those modules, so when Dan and does come and show up in our classes, they're already prepped, or maybe we embed those more in our introduction classes mm -hmm. so that Dan is showing up and polishing rather than helping them polish rather than just get started. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I really appreciate your time this week. Um, you also will be doing our seminar later this week, um, and you're dedicating a lot of time to us, but we really appreciate it. And I, it's so much fun to see all the new stuff that you're pulling together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much. I was just trying to think just a couple of things that, that I wanted to yeah, add. Yeah, please. Know, if we were thinking about just um, for students to, you know, try to, obviously we have our career classes that we want to, you know, promote too, but there are other great classes out there, you know, like those introductory classes mm -hmm. are really good, but I also like to promote like internships, like every yeah. student should try to get some kind of experiential learning in there. You know, if you've got either an internship or if it's field work or if it's uh, some kind of a practicum or whatever, something to actually get out there in the field before you graduate. So it's not like your first job out, you realize, oh, you know what? I loved all the theory, but <laughs> I just don't, <laughs> I don't like, you know, I love learning about working with kids, but I don't like actually working with kids, right? That would be the worst thing. It's a really important yeah. thing to see, yeah. <laughs> it might be good to test it out too. And so any kind of experience that a person can get, whether it be service or whether it be um, an actual class or a part-time job or something that's related to the field they want to go into. It's going to help them design that career. And that is one of the th things you can choose for when you're searching Handshake too, right? For those, mm -hmm. in, it has an internships filter and a lot of great filters that can be used to f filter those out for different majors and different career areas as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just want to help students get experiences, find great career paths, and whether it's from our office, faculty, we just want to make sure they're well on their way. So lots of good resources for us to share and partner on. Yeah, well, definitely. We're super excited to keep it up. That's keep up the good work, and I'm excited for. I'm going to start embedding those into my courses awesome. Awesome. Um, right away. Actually, I've my seminar class was this morning, so perfect. Yeah, we'll Let get it. Let us know embedded. how we can help do that. Okay, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, great. Thanks again for coming, and we'll wrap up for today.